Hello, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful. We're celebrating the launch of the Magic Sandcastle by Claire Milford Haven. Welcome, Claire, and congratulations on the launch of your first children's book. Oh, Karen, thank you so much. This is such an exciting day for me. I I literally can't believe it's finally come around oh. after you know writing this little book many years ago, tucking it away, and then digging it out last year during lockdown. So it's very oh. special. Let's talk about that, okay? Because you had this story that's a very heartfelt story and very um, important to you. And then um, we we teamed you up with an amazing illustrator and, and now your words have come to life. So can you share with us a little bit about how that process was for you? Yeah, so I wrote The Magic Sandcastle some years ago. I, I literally cannot remember when. Yeah. And... Um, I hid it away in a file somewhere and I thought, well, I'll bring it out for a rainy day. And then a good friend of mine said, said during lockdown, we were all, we were all on a, like we all had a group of friends and everyone was talking about what they were doing. And she said, why don't you dig out in the magic sandcastle? And I said, oh, I don't even know where it is, but yeah, that's a good idea. And, and I did. And then I was put in touch with Karen, which was fabulous with you, Karen, which was amazing. And then, a wonderful in illustrator Dave came into the picture and has created, has brought this whole book to life with his illustrations. And and they were so, he, he managed to, uh, I don't know how he managed to translate my words into pictures so well. And I wanted exactly the right, the way he's done it, the sort of watercolor feel. And uh, he's really brought the book to life. So it's fabulous. Yeah. It um, is so and and really the book is is based on my the book is based on my my summers spent on nantucket island in in the states i was born in the states uh, my mother was american but my father was english and i spent all my life here as you can probably tell from my accent um and it, it was very much the story is very much based on summers there uh, as a child and then and then taking our own children there and it, they they just love Nantucket. Nantucket is a very magical place. It's one of the few places in the world that doesn't have any traffic lights. Um, the streets are cobbled. You know, it is really, really quaint and very New England. It is in New England. And every, you know, every summer when the children were small, we'd go to the beach and they would build sandcastles. And I just wanted to capture that in a book. Um, I wanted to capture their childhood, those very happy memories. Um, also, my husband and I got married on Nantucket. So that was also, you know, another reason to to capture it in, in the book. And, and just kind of bring out some fantasy, some dreams, uh, and a few other messages in the book, which I could mm -hmm. go into now if you'd like me to. Yes, yes. <laughs> and just before we do, I just wanted to share, you know, capturing that memory and using it in a story, you know, a memory that people can relate to, but that's also very personal to you. Uh, you know, as an author um, and, and as a publisher, I've always heard, you know, and always told authors to write about what you know about, you know, use mm. something familiar and, and write about it because that's where the emotion is. You've felt it, you've, you've been through the motions of it. So to use that as the basis of a story and um, to do that. And then you have woven some some really important morals and messages into this story so will you share with us a little about that yes i'd love to actually so i'm i mean obviously family is hugely important uh to all of us i believe and i think during during the past year you know family became very, even more important because all of us were were kind of locked up <laughs> locked up with our families which actually for me was super special because my my kids are now grown up and they they've they've deserted us for for london and and uh work and partners and wives and things so it was so special to have them home and so that made me really think about the importance of family life and and i tried to encapsulate that in the book and and particularly the importance also of grandparents and the fun that grandparents have with their grandchildren and the importance of those relationships. 
Um, I'm also a great believer in teamwork and collaboration. I don't really like doing things on my own. I like to collaborate with people. I, I love being part of a team like I have been with you, Karen, and, and with Dave. And to me, being part of a team um, get, makes us more creative and it's just, it's just really important. So it, there's a message there about teamwork. The other message is about playing outside, about nature. I think too many kids these days, unfortunately, spend too much time on their phones, yeah. um, not maybe not playing enough outside. So there's that message there. Um, and never, never giving up. Don't give up when, when, when you get knocked down. Don't give up. You know, have the tenacity, have the resilience to pick yourself up and and keep going. And uh, and with hard effort and and hard work, you can always win. See, you guys, <laughs> that is why <laughs> you have to read this to your children. All of the, this wisdom you can instill in them in a young age and they may not know what they're reading, but they will capture the essence of all of those. And, um, you know, all of those life morals, really, that, you know, that really gives them amazing foundation for life, really, isn't it? Um, and to have those conversations. I, I love what I love about this book is the conversation. Now, we live in Perth and, um, you know, we go to the beach a lot. So we build a lot of sandcastles. And that's a privilege, you know, not every child gets to do that. You can still do a mud castle, can't you? You know, there's, you know, you can <laughs> get creative. But it's the conversation that you have around uh, around your story that is absolutely, truly special, you know, and, and you can create your own, um, you know, story that, and that's why it's, it's such a beautiful, we, we just love this book because of not only the sandcastles and the magic of it, but because of what it encompasses and, and the family and the values and all of those things encompassed together. Isn't it that Thank okay? You. I think so. And, and, and obviously in the book, there's, you know, there, there, there are fantasies and dreams. And I think we all need to hold on to our, our dreams and fantasies. Uh, as well as our reality, but it's important to to hang on to those because that has to be part of part of life. Has to be dreaming and 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 having that in our lives. Not nothing needs to always be too serious and too uh, too. Uh, what's the word? I can't think of the word. But anyway, I think yeah, it's important religious. to hold on to dreams. Yeah, how can we make dreams come true if we don't bring them into reality? Hey. <laughs> 100%, 100%. We always need to. So, and I think, you know, as you say, kids do build sandcastles. Every time you go to a beach, there are children building sandcastles. It gives them something to do on the beach. Not that the beach is a boring place to go, but, you know, little kids always need to have something to do. And, um, and every beach I go to, I see children building sandcastles and I love it. And even even the analogy of it, you know, you build a sandcast, you put so much effort into it, teamwork, all of that stuff, and it's inevitably going to get washed away or somebody's <laughs> going to jump on it, you know, but that's okay. You know, you still created, you know, that's the thing. It's it's the joy of that, of, of the, you know, of the creating that is there. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And <laughs> and exactly, if it, do, if it does get washed away, uh, you just need to build it again and again and again. And and then in the end, you will succeed. Yeah, absolutely. That's a life um, story, isn't a, it? It is. It's so beautiful. It is just so beautiful. And you can read it and, you know, get get deeper into it every time. You can read it differently. Um, I just am sure that you can. Will we bring up the man himself, David, to have a little conversation with us? I see he's a busy bee. We can't leave him idle for too long. He starts getting creative. He's got his head down, but hopefully he'll raise it up for us. <laughs> Where is he? There Hello, he is. David. I'm doing something. I said I would just have a simple interview, but now I've gone and painted something. And I'm in the oh, panel. But yes, exciting. What have you Andy. done? <laughs> I don't think oh, he's finished no. yet, are I you? I don't know whether you'll like it, Claire, but it's something to do with the magic sandcastle. We'll, <laughs> well, I'm sure. I, I love what you've done so far. Right. So I, I'd be very surprised if I don't like it. Um, Dave, can we ask you a question? Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So, Dave, yes, what was it like yes. bringing the magic sandcastle to life? Coming. 
Yeah. <laughs> what was it like bringing the magic so sandcastle to life, Dave? It was a really fascinating process, actually. I mean, watercolors were the, was the chosen medium, and I'm not sort of a, a, a long experienced watercolorist, but I've you know I've, done, I've dabbled in it and so forth. And um, the very first thing that happened, and I'll be honest, I went, "Oh my God, watercolors and the washi and the sea and it looks summery and everything, a little bit cartoony, but a little bit English book and blah blah blah." And then I got home and I thought, "What have I said? What have I what have I got in my mind now that I've got to create?" But <laughs> saying all that it was a wonderful process and um really enjoyable actually i mean yeah, yeah. i mean i'll show you i've got all the bits and pieces here if you want to see sort of how i'm going to be yes because yeah. i mean yeah well first Sheriff. of all i had to sketch out the characters and i went to the computer for that because you can scrub anything out and start again so once i had the basic characters that was in Photoshop because it's nice and easy to yep. get there. Then I went to my watercolor desk and I thought, okay, so start sketching out the characters. So I would just do simple sort of watercolors to get an idea <laughs> of what they might look like, you see, sort of that sort of thing. Then I thought, well, how am I going to finish them? Am I going to put pencil lines or dark pencil lines? Or, and I tried an ink line. I thought, and then I thought, well, that's nice, but it's a bit sharp and it's a bit harsh, you know. So the the way I the way I finished them, and I'll show you, is I just I just used a, a fairly dark pencil. So it retained that light look, but still was was still was defined. So it was sort of that sort of English book look, you know. Yeah. But then also what I discovered was I might want to change the positions of the kids or I don't know. Put a put a boat in the in in the sea or something. So I I what I decided to do was do an easy method so that I could change. For instance, if Claire said, "Oh, could you put a blah blah in the background or move that over a bit or so <laughs> forth," um, I wouldn't I wouldn't have to go back and do a whole painting. So what I started doing was backgrounds. Background one. Oh, actually, and I did I did that. I, that was when the testers. I was thinking. Oh, got to have some nice Nantuckety sort of, uh, you know, sort Light of landmarks in there. Yeah, but I just love the lots of backgrounds, you see, like this. Yeah. And the reason, for, oh, there's a nice background with a boat in it, for instance, you see. And it's not and a blah, blah. blah. <laughs> it's all very, yeah, it's all very blah, blah, blah. And uh, <laughs> so, the reason I did that is because, okay, so here's, for instance, here's the kids where they win. Right, and there's that cheeky hey. seagull and crab at the bottom. <laughs> well done, guys. And um, I thought, if I do it like this, I've got the foreground and I've got the background, so I can go to the computer and I can make the kids, I can move them over, I can make them taller, I can take away items I don't need. Claire might say, oh, can you add, I don't know, a, a kite or something, and I can just easily add it without having to do the entire painting again so for instance i'll show you for instance with the cover i had the foreground here which is the grass mm -hmm. the kids and the sign but i left out the c and the writing so i could change whatever i needed to you see some of the paintings were complete in uh, early on but then i decided mm. to do this method because it just makes it's just flexible you see you're a, a genius, you're a genius. Yeah, no, you are a genius, well, I hope honestly. So. Mind you, I must say, I remember early on loading up the pictures onto the computer, and when you're working in Photoshop, you've got every colour and effect under the sun. And I think you'll both remember this. And I started adding, oh, let's make it this, and let's do that. And I was sending over photo uh, images, and you were both saying, David, what are you doing? You've kind of changed it it all looks a bit disney do you know what i mean do you remember where's the watercolor yes. gone and i went oh crikey sorry yeah because i got two i got you know you get so many colors you can add and i went back to hang on it's watercolor backgrounds david stop it you know but yeah the whole process was was very very enjoyable um and yeah and i think we got a great result a really great result i was very proud of it actually you know we we have Absolutely. a a fabulous result and all the children uh, also, I mean, they, they are my kids and they all look as they look then. So it's absolutely oh, perfect. 
you have you really them. captured them so well, each of them. And my the little one, Louisa, she had this terrible haircut that we still laugh about. And I don't know why I had a haircut. Like somebody said, you had a sort of, she looked like a, a kind of German stormtrooper. It was this kind of <laughs> oh my God. really, really aggressive haircut. Um. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and it's so fun to see, to see that little and now haircut. it's captured forever in a book. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. She'll never, yeah, she'll always hear yeah, about she'll it. She'll never be allowed to forget it. Um, but, and also, Dave, what I love was the addition of the, the cheeky, the cheeky crab and the seagull. Oh, yeah. Uh, because um, both of those are, you know, both of those are a bird and, and the crab, obviously, we always encounter in Nantucket, so it um it's very special to have them and they I, I think they really add to it they they're just two other characters that that really add to the, the the kind of flavor of the book and um and also i love a granny fairchild who you know oh, yeah. was my mum granny annie oh. as we called her and um she was doing granny the dishes annie, yeah she was doing the dishes which um I'm not sure she ever did, <laughs> but she looks, she looks so, I, I love her image and I love the number plate, fun one, and oh, yeah. um, that, that old Jeep we had. So you, you really captured it all brilliantly, so thank oh, you. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you so much. And it's fun. It's I very, very special. Like crab and seagull, they're sort of like, they're looking up, they're sort of um, moral support for the kids, aren't they? You can do it. And then when at the end, when the, when, when the sandcastle gets destroyed and the kids are like, just, oh, just just go for it, just do it. They're like looking at their watch and the crabs are like, well, oh, God, <laughs> will they make it? <laughs> no, no, it's so, so great. And they're so curious, you know, they're, they're really, they're, they're, they're very curious as what the children are up to and they really want to be involved. And yeah, they're, they're, they're a great addition. I, I didn't even oh. mention them in the book, but they're... They're a wonderful I just took addition, a chance. So. It's just one of those things where I went, I bet you there's a I bet you there's some animals watching on the beach or something. And I just thought, well, oh, just <laughs> do a little sketch and I'll send it to Claire and see what she says. You know. Yeah, no, I love them. Yeah. I absolutely love them. Dave, let oh. us know. Are you close to finishing your little thing or will we put you down for a few minutes and pull you back up to see if you're finished? Well, okay. I've just I'm just sort of doing a bit around it. I've I'll have to finish it after once we've... Oh, I've gone over it to... Hang on, I'm just going to rub that bit out. I know it's a complete mystery. What is he doing? I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Guys, you are getting just real life. Do you have an action here? <laughs> I just quickly write something on it. It's very, very rough because, I mean, these things take a little bit more time than I've allowed for. I've sort of... Yeah. Had sort of 10 it's like minutes, 15 but, minutes but we'll see or something. What it is. Yeah. I'll finish it off. I'll finish it off, Claire, and if you, if it's not, um, if you're not averse to it, you go. Oh my goodness! I could that. No, if, <laughs> if, if you like it, I'll send it over. But basically, okay. look, yeah. it's you on the Nantucket beach with your book. I'll fill in the book. Oh, and, um, oh, it's that's your so official sweet of Magic you. Magic Sandcastle book, and you being all proud oh. with it. You see? Oh, Dave, thank you, thank you so much. That is so oh, sweet sorry, of you. That really is a. The most lovely surprise, which I was not expecting at all. There you go. Yeah. Thank you, you very, very much. Here. Grab yeah. the seagull in the corner or whatever. I don't know. A nice <laughs> boat in there and, and send it off. Well, so you've got your As I said earlier, I think teamwork and collaboration is, is key. So I'm very glad <laughs> they're there with me. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you, Dave. Dave. Really thoughtful. Really, and thank really you for everything in the book, Dave. Wonderful. No, pleasure. Really, Absolutely really... pleasure completing it. Lovely book. Gorgeous book. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Dave, and, we'll send people your way because no doubt we'll have inquiries. But thank you for joining us today for the launch of this amazing book. I'm going to put you backstage for a minute. Stay there. And when we no come problem. off live, we'll put you back up. Wow. Isn't he a treat? Not only is a genius, he's got a heart of gold. Hey? He has got a heart of gold. That was such a lovely touch. I had no idea he was going to bring that surprise out. So yes. very, very sweet. We haven't actually met in person yet so we need to do that definitely. you will can you imagine if the two i can see the visual of you meeting and him handing you over this this um image you know it's such oh, it's an gonna amazing be very visual. special 
it yeah. is going to be very special indeed. And um, and so we are celebrating the Australian launch of yeah. your book today. And uh, the US and UK edition will be in spring. And the reason why we're, we're coming ahead with the Australian one is because we're about on the 1st of December is our summer. And so we are in sandcastle season. <laughs> I know, so I know. It's perfect for our um for for us right now. So we are so happy to release this book to the Australian audience. And if anybody cannot wait to um to spring in the US or UK, you can go to serentipress.org. Um <laughs> somebody has just shared, Emma has just shared we have snowmen <laughs> maybe that's another book emma <laughs> um yes you can go to serenitypress.org and grab yourself a hardcover there um or you can grab a kindle wherever you are in the world so but um it's such a joy claire to sit to be part of the journey and the process of this book coming to life because you haven't been an, a children's book author all of your life have you no, I haven't. Um, I, I, when I was younger, in fact, before I had my kids and when my kids were still quite young, I was doing some freelance writing and I worked for a magazine for eight years. And so writing was something that I did. It was my job. Um, but then I stopped writing for quite a few years and I only picked it up again, you know, in a, in a sort of serious way, like, you know, last year when I, when I dug the book out and I've started writing some other stuff again. So for me, it's something I love to do. I I've always, every day I write a journal anyway. So I always like to get my thoughts out on paper every day. And I think writing is really important. It's a really important part of, well, certainly of my life. And I, I would love to encourage children to write a bit more maybe just keep a little diary every day and write the stuff down get it out and um so but this is my first kids book yeah it's my first yeah. children's book and i've loved the experience and i've already got a, an idea for a for a second book so um yeah dave and i have been chatting about that too really let's it. focus on the ma magic sandcastle right now but yeah it's really it's really kind of you know made something click in my head and mm. um i really want to continue to do this now beautiful and children's books you know and um, people think that children's books are you know a few words you know whatever but children's books are a bigger process than a novel because you you liaise and you, you work closely with an illustrator also children are the biggest critics you know you can't cover that you know they they know what they want to read so and um, that's why it's so important you know when you when you're able to um to be a children's book author and deliver a story that children enjoy um mm. you know you really have succeeded in that because it's it's hard sometimes it's harder to write shorter than it is longer you know what i mean and get the yes. message across I think I think sometimes it is, and I think it's also that thing of of actually going back in your own mind to how mm -hmm. how it was when you were a child, yeah. and and kind of thinking through a child's mind, and and that process for me was fun. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that process, and probably at heart, I'm still very much a kid and, and still quite childlike. And um, you know, I love nature, I love animals. Um, and that's really important to me. So there will be certainly in 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 my books there will be, nature will be a big part, and animals because I think they should also be a big part of a kid's life. Absolutely, so. and the curiosity and all of the the adventures that can be had. You know, all of that yeah. magic. We all have a child within us. It's whether we choose to let them come come out and have fun in our adulthood. It's up to us, isn't it? Really yeah. well. Dave certainly does. You do and I do. So <laughs> there we go. A winning combination. So thank you so much, Claire, and for and everyone for watching. And let's declare the Magic Sandcastle launched in Australia. And oh, yeah. it's so exciting. Yay! <laughs> Such a beautiful <laughs> book. I'm just gonna pull it over. It's gorgeous. It really is. My lights on it there. Let's move I've the got, light. I've got my You've copy got here. Where, there we go. Yeah. Oh, just beautiful. about get it there. But, yeah, but Karen, yes. thank you. Thank you so much for, for making this happen. So I'm very grateful to you. I'm oh, very excited about, about the journey of the Magic Sandcastle. 
Yeah, let's see where it goes. We have let's some Emma's, goes. Emma's here. Emma's watching. Hello, Emma. Well done on the launch and great interview. There you go. So we are inspired. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank Everyone, you so much. goodbye. Thank you so much. Please tell your friends about the Magic Sand Castle because honestly, it makes a great gift, even for Christmas. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.